Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one I will show you what is probably the most complicated and time-consuming project on this channel yet. Using an external GPU on the Apple TV. So buckle up, this is going to be a long one. The idea for this video started back when I filmed the Apple TV flash mod video. For this video I had to disassemble the Apple TV. And while doing that, I noticed the Apple TV uses a socketed Wi-Fi card. Apparently, this mini PCIe slot can be used with a so-called Crystal HD card, which is a video decoder. So I wondered if it would be possible to connect other PCIe devices. Maybe GPUs? A 3090? Maybe I could create an 8K Apple TV even before Apple does. This was actually the reason I tried to install macOS on the Apple TV to try out PCIe cards. So before I can tell you about all the failures and eventual success of my quest to connect PCIe devices to this Apple TV, I need to explain the general concept. A few years ago I bought this EXP GDC Beast, an external GPU dock to use with my gaming notebook. This is a mini PCIe to full-size PCIe adapter that adapts the one PCIe lane for example of your notebook's Wi-Fi card, to a full-size PCIe X16 interface. Of course, only physically. Electrically, this is still the one lane mini PCIe offers. So in the case of the Apple TV, we only have one PCIe 1.0 lane. This gives us a total of 250 megabytes per second or just two gigabit per second bandwidth to work with, aka not much. Even the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module features one PCIe Gen 2 lane with double the bandwidth of the Apple TV. But I still wanted to try and see what could be done. My first idea was if I could use an old SAS card I had laying around. I connected two hard drives and a DVD drive to it, which worked perfectly under macOS on the Apple TV. So then I naturally thought about an eGPU. Could we get this 14 year old Apple TV 4K or even 8K ready? And this was the point where the whole project turned from a short experiment to a months long obsession. After the success with the SAS card I tried a few old GPUs from Nvidia and ATI. They were all detected under macOS to the degree that they would show up in the system information and with LSPCI which lists connected PCIe devices. So I tried to use Hackintosh tools to enable the GPUs. Sadly, I couldn't get anything working. But hey, at least I produced some cool failures like this one. After reading some more on old Hackintosh forums, I thought I should try a GPU from the time period of this macOS installation that was also actually made for Macs. All the cards I tried until now were PC cards. I found a cheap 8800 GT from a Mac Pro 3.1 on eBay and bought it. After repasting and cleaning this old card, I retried what I did for the other cards. Sadly, no difference. To see if this problem was because of macOS or the Apple TV, I disassembled the white $15 MacBook and tried to connect the GPU there. Sadly, I got the same results using the MacBook, so I wanted to try Linux again. After using my OSMC method from my 2016 video about Linux on the Apple TV without success, I wanted to try a real Linux distro. OSMC is very slimmed down to the specific hardware of the Apple TV. So this is where I discovered the Penbuntu method to boot a Linux kernel I used in my Android on Apple TV video. Wow, this video turned into a crossover episode of all my other videos. After testing the low-hanging fruits of Debian with LXDE and Lubuntu, I noticed I would need a more specialized Linux distro which is optimized for low-spec PCs. Since we are only working with one 32-bit Pentium M core at 1 GHz and 256 MB of RAM. So after going through some small Linux distros like Linux Lite or Bodhi Linux, I got to a distro called Antix. Antix is a systemd less Debian-based super small Linux distro. But for me the notable thing about this distro was that after booting the live USB stick 
on the Apple TV, I got a GPU selection screen. And after selecting the ATI GPU I used for testing at the time, my secondary monitor, connected to this GPU, turned on. I was stunned. After at this point 3 months, I finally had success. After looking at the output during the boot process and googling, I found out how this worked. So finally, I thought I was ready to install Antix Linux on this Apple TV. But of course I was not. The 64GB SD card I used to test in the Apple TV died just that day and I had to get a new one. So next day my new micro SD card showed up. Now the installation went through. If I boot this now, we would still be using the internal GPU of the Apple TV. So first we have to do some changes. The first one was to create two files in the slash etc slash x11 directory. I just copied them from the live USB. The first one is the xorg.conf file. Here we need to specify the PCIe path of the external GPU. The same path needs to be put in the other file called xorg bus id. To find this path we can type in lspci into the terminal on the Apple TV. Here we can see the ATI GPU. The next thing we have to edit is to disable the NVIDIA driver. Without this I could not get a usable picture, only lines. This also means we can only use ATI or AMD GPUs externally. For this we need to create a file in slash lib slash modprobe.d called videocarddisable.conf. The content of this file was also copied from the live USB stick. After this we should be able to boot Linux on the external GPU. Now I finalized my boot stick to boot Antix automatically. I even made a boot image. Now to the final setup. First I opened up the Apple TV and put in the microSD card with Antix on it. Then I needed to remove the Wi-Fi cord to get access to the mini PCIe slot. So here lies our one lane of PCIe Gen 1 goodness. My next problem was that the adapter that carries the PCIe lane to the GPU dock is the shorter mini PCIe variant. So I had no way of screwing it into the Apple TV. To fix this I made a bracket out of a sheet of copper. Now I could finally screw the adapter in. Funnily they use a HDMI plug on the other side. Probably because the connectors and ports are cheap and it has enough pins to carry the PCIe signal. So next we will plug in our GPU. In this case a Sapphire Ultimate ATI Radeon HD 5670 with 1GB of GDDR5. And also the fake HDMI from the Apple TV. Then I plug an HDMI cable into the GPU and into my capture card on the other end. Next I connect the USB hub with the boot stick, mouse and keyboard to the Apple TV as well as the power cord. Now we also need to power the GPU. For this I use an old ATX power supply with 250 watts. I also need a fan since the GPU is passive and relies on case fans to cool it, which we clearly don't have here. The fan will be powered via Molex. Next the GPU dock gets power. Sadly the original plug here snapped off, so I'll just jam the green wire in here. The green wire is used to turn the power supply on with the Apple TV. Last but not least, I added some LEDs, because we all know that LEDs add free performance. First test, looks good. Here's a little shot with the lights turned off to really take in the LEDs. This is the final version from the last preview video. As we can see it actually boots. And it switched over to the external GPU automatically. Now let's look at the capture. 
As you can see, our resource usage is actually quite low using this super slim Linux. The general system responsiveness is also very good for a 1 GHz Pentium M. Let's start with the basics. Video playback. Full HD content is still not watchable. This might be a driver thing, but looking at the CPU usage during play and when I pause here, it's clear that our CPU just can't keep up. Trying to play a 4K file was so bad it froze the system. So our dreams of plugging an 8K capable GPU into this and having an 8K Apple TV before Apple has one are crushed. Ok now for the meat and potatoes of my test. Trying Minecraft on the external GPU. I used Minecraft 1.2.5 for this and ran it using a shell script since all launchers and new versions of Minecraft require 64-bit CPUs which we don't have here. Let's skip the loading. I also switched to full screen, lowered all the settings and created a new world. After waiting a bit for the world to load in, it actually runs okayish at around 30 fps, but there are quite the stutters when we move fast. So let's build something. I actually don't know what I was going for here. But with mods this could actually work quite well for full HD. I also tried this in 720p but the results were quite similar. The bottleneck is clearly our CPU. And maybe also the RAM. Next, since we are running Linux, we also have to test SuperTux. Compared to Minecraft, this runs better, but the delay added by my capturing is way more apparent in this game. But that's not the Apple TV's fault. There are still some frame drops. Yeah, so this is not pleasant going through my capturing. Now let's turn it up to 11 and test GTA San Andreas. This game is about 2 years older than the Apple TV. We are using the Windows version here with Wine. Everything is on the lowest settings and we are running at 800 by 600. Loading was faster than I expected, and the opening cutscene was also fine. But then the gameplay was abysmal, like 2 FPS completely unplayable. But the fact that this runs at all on this Apple TV is surprising to me. Now that concludes my test here. If you have any other programs that you would like to see running on this hardware, write it in the comments and we can do a follow up looking at them. Also, if you have any ideas for PCIe cards, I could test with the Apple TV. I also promised that I have other content on the way that is not Apple TV related. This video took way more time to make than I have ever anticipated, but I am super pleased with the results. I mean, have you ever seen an Apple TV with an eGPU? I haven't. So if you liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, maybe also non-Apple TV related content, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.